Today we're going to be looking at the mean value theorem, but first we have to take a look at Rolle's theorem, just to understand the difference between the two. And Rolle's theorem is very similar to something we did in the last video. So if we have a function f that's continuous on the closed interval a to b, and it's differentiable, and the extra condition here is that we have f of a equal to f of b, then we say there's some number c such that f prime of c is equal to zero. Or we can say that c is a critical point. Or, you know, we can call it a maximum or minimum, whatever. So here's a little graph we have. Here is a point A and a point B. In fact, we're going to make it real tall. And the only difference is, is that A and B have to be equal to each other. So this point here is F of A, and it's also F of B. So there's many different types of graphs we can have in here. We can have one that looks like that. We can have one that looks like that. We can have one that looks crazy. Or we can have one that's absolutely flat. And what this says is that no matter what the graph is, there's going to be some point in there that is either a local maximum or a local minimum. One of the two. So in this case, we have a local max here, local minimum here. We have a bunch of different maximums and minimums on this graph. And in the straight graph, well, the whole thing, the derivative of zero. It's the derivative is zero at every single point on a flat graph. So that is Rolle's theorem. I don't think we need to uh, talk about the cases, but we can make it extra formal, we can say if f of x is equal to k, then it's always zero. If f of x is greater or equal to some point f of a, then we have a situation that looks like that. And if f of x is less than f of a, then we have a situation that looks like that. And those are the conditions formally that we're talking about here. But that's not what the video is about. The video is about this lovely formula called, a lovely theorem called the mean value theorem, which states that if some function f is continuous on a, b, and it's differentiable in a, b, then there is some c such that f prime of c, can you guess where this is going? Probably not. Such that f of b minus f of a over b minus a is equal to f prime of c. And we can rewrite this to say that, uh, f of b minus f of a is equal to f prime of c times b minus a. And the question is, does this look familiar? And it might. It might. What this means is that if we have a function and we have some closed interval a and b, and I'm going to pick a nice function that looks like this, there is going to be some c on this line here where the derivative, so this tangent line here, is equal to the line between f of a and f of b. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick two points here. I'm going to call it uh, f of a here, f of b here. And the function is going to look like this. And what we're saying is there's some point where, what is going on with this thing right here, f of a. So we have some derivative that is equal to this derivative here. So the difference between point a and b is going to be some point on the graph where the tangent is parallel. So. We can say that these two are parallel. So this is f prime of c is parallel to f of a minus f of b. That's what the theorem states. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do one little question here. And we're going to say, OK, well, f of x is equal to x cubed minus x. And we're going to look on the interval 0, 2. So we take a look at our formula, f of 2 minus f of 0 is going to be equal to f prime of c times 2 minus 0. So this is 2 times f prime of c, which is going to be 3c squared minus 1. f of 2 is going to be 8 minus 2 minus f of 0, which is 0. 
So we can say that 6 is equal to 6c squared minus 2. And again, I'm going to slow down here and I'm going to clarify some things. The theorem states that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. So we did algebra here to get to this step, plugging in a and b. So we have a is equal to 0, b is equal to 2. We then plugged in our values in the second step, taking the derivative with respect to x, plugging in the value c, and then we simplified. So now we're going to solve this question. So we're going to get 8 is equal to 6c squared. So c is going to be 8 divided by 6. That's 4 thirds. So this is going to be the square root of 4 thirds. And we only want the positive because the positive is in the interval here. So what this says is that we have a graph here of our function from 0 to 2. So there's 2. Here's 0. At 0, it's up here at 8, and at 2, it's down at 0 here, f of 2, sorry. This is backwards. Again, it's very easy to make little mistakes. So let's actually redraw that graph. At 0, it's going to be at 0 here, the point, and at 2, it's going to be up here at 8. So what we're saying is that if we draw a line between this two, the function, which I'm going to draw like this, which is pretty much the function, at some point, which is going to be the square root of 4 over the square root of 3, which we can actually re rewrite this as um, 2 over root 3. So at some point, 2 over root 3, which I'm going to take a guess is right there, if we take the derivative at this point here, which I think it would be more like right there in our graph, so I'm going to do it right there, then the derivative is going to have a tangent line that is perpendicular to this. So these two are perpendicular. And if you plug this into Wolfram Alpha, you would find that this is the case. Um, obviously with sketching, it's not going to be perfect, but this is the idea of the mean value theorem. So that's actually all I have for the video. I don't have any practice questions because honestly, this question, I don't think I've ever seen in an exam before. You usually get one on your homework assignments, but this is one of those things that's kind of just cool to take a look at and cool to look at the proof and just understand and be like, whoa, this is crazy. If we have a closed interval, then if we take the difference between the two lines, there's always going to be some point that uh, the derivative is equal to that point. Okay, so what we're going to do right now before we end this video is take a look at how this theorem relates to Rolle's theorem. Because what you'll see is that Rolle's theorem is actually just a very special case of the mean value theorem. Because if f of a is equal to f of b, then what we have here is that f of b minus f of a is equal to zero. So f prime of c is going to be equal to 0, as we can see here. So this is a very, very cool circumstance where we start out with Rolle's theorem, and then we generalize it. But really, Rolle's theorem is just a very specific case of the mean value theorem where the difference is 0, which is why we started with Rolle's theorem to motivate the mean value theorem. So th these two are very crucial theorems, at least in the proof of of functions and graphs and their properties, but as far as beginner calculus, probably won't be asked to show why this happens. You might be able to have to do a question that shows that there's some value on the graph, but I mean, this, this is one of those things that's just kind of cool. So if you don't appreciate this, maybe calculus might not be the right way to go. You know, you got to see the beauty in these kind of things. So when we come back, we'll take a look at curve sketching. Well, at least the the fundamentals of curve sketching.